the first form form one is the NDA and this is so you can receive such things as the business plan and so on so first of all you write the date and don't mind this it looks like there's not enough space to write for example the 25th but it will be okay just write it correctly and then your name and remember it has to be the exact same name as you put in the KYC process so the exact name from your passport or driver's license and then your address and again it has to be the same exact address you use for the KYC and down at the bottom at where you have to sign it the NDA the recipient is your signature and you can use digital signatures if you have such a thing and then by is your name in Roman letters and then the title well, because the NDA is normally for a, a between companies, two companies, then you have the, the, the job description you write here. But if you go ahead and write Mr. or Mrs., that will be also okay. Or else, normally in, in an NDA between two companies, it's your job description. So what you do, your CEO or, yeah. Then you have form number Two, and that is the private placement agreement and you have it says dignity Corp, and then it says ATTN ATTN means attention and since these documents are not made by dignity go but they are taken from the SEC and are normally used for, by lawyers uh, financial advisors and so on for the clients uh, then this document is from you to dignity go and because it's from you to Dignity Go, you write in the attention field the Dignity Go compliance team. And then you have the general information and again, full name of prospect investor. It has to be the exact name you used in the KYC. So make sure of that. Down here, the first of you received the email, it says dollar value. But that's a mistake, it's a typo, and that has been corrected, so most of you won't see that dollar sign. If you have some of the first emails where it says the dollar value, just remove that and just write it. Just like this corrected version, it says amount of DIG token currently held. If you wait on receiving a corrected version, you're going to wait until you're 90 years old. So just make sure that you write the exact same amount of tokens that you register. So you all of your pre-January 18, 8 a.m. EST DIG tokens. Your tax identification number in Danish, that it did CPA number. Other places, if you're outside of US, you have your local identification number or your tax number. That's here where you put that in. Next, on the contact information, it is of course your contact information, your address, your telephone number. Facsimile means a fax machine and most people don't have that. If you don't, just write NA. Your email address and then the legal information, state of country of residence, so where are you living? And then this next one is only for the US people. The next one, state where you registered to vote. That's where you go and vote. When you go and vote, that's where you write. You can write the state and city. Date of birth, country of citizenship. Make sure that's what according to your passport. So where you have your citizenship. Down here you are asked, are you a PEP, political exposed person or related to a PEP? I hope you are not a PEP or related to a PEP because there is a lot of headache and when you are so just know that name of employer who do you work for nature of business what kind of company is it you work for and down here is a first of employer again if your employer don't have a fax machine then just write na most companies doesn't have a fax machine business experience if you retire, please describe your last occupation. So you do that. If you are a retired person, just write that. Most of you are not. Current occupation. So what do you do? What is your job? The title. That's your job title. You can be, for example, you are CEO or CMO or 
whatever you are, you have some kind of, of you know, um, description for that job title. And then it asks you position and, or duties. So what do you do there? Nature of employment, that's how are you hired? Is it a full-time contract? Is it per hour? Are you a substitute? That's where you put in length of employment. Here, if you've been where you're working now for the last five years, you only fill out this two here, years and months. If you, let's say you only work six months where you are now, then you have to fill out down here and you have to go back five years so if you were somebody who switched jobs every six months you have to fill it out all for the last five years professional qualifications that can be your you know, if you're an accountant or a lawyer or you know your professional qualification your education yeah it gives yourself financial advisors only list a fin licensed financial advisor you might have. It, 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 you can't list somebody on Twitter, neither me or, or anyone else who, who is not a licensed financial advisor. And down here it asks you, are you an associated person of a registered broker dealer? And then you say yes or no. You can only know if you are or not. But then if you are, you have to name the, the firm, the broker dealer. Net worth and income, and here it's very important in the first one that you, if you live outside of US where it, it's not in dollars, you just use an online converter to convert, for example, the euro into dollars. And you cannot take in your primary uh, home in this evaluation. And you know, you just add up everything. So you have your car you, that you paid that has some value. You take that, all these things where, where it has value, you put it in, but you can't use your, your, your own home in this. The next one is your own income for the last three years without your wife, if you have a wife. The next one is you and your wife's income for the last three years. The third one here is what do you expect to earn the next three years and without your wife's income? And the last one, what do you expect to earn the next three years together with your wife's income? Remember, don't include any unrealized gains from crypto or stocks or anything. If they are unrealized, don't count it in. Number 11, investment experience. If there's some of these that you don't know what it is, you probably didn't invest in it. But remember, you have also... Some of you a pension that you invest through even to a capital. So, you know, just think about it and just click off less than a year between one to three years and so on. Down here, the commodities, that means gold, corn, oil. This is commodities. Down here, do you have such knowledge and experience in financial and business matters as to capable of evaluating merits and risk of an investment in the securities? Yes, of course, you understand the risk. Yes, of course, you can afford to lose it all. And then they ask you, would your purchase of securities be for investment? Well, uh, you're not doing it for fun. <laughs> so yeah, it, it is for investment. About risk profile, well, it's easy to say you all have high willingness to take a risk. You maybe think you don't have, but you are because you are you bought dignity. You are in crypto. Crypto is seen as high risk. Investment objectives. How would you describe your personal investment objectives? Well, you're doing it to maximize as you invest in low cap projects. If you were trying to, to, you know, capital preservation, you wouldn't be investing in crypto. So time horizon, and, and, and this is where the average still invest for five to 10 years. That's what the average Joe look at this. Then it asks you liquid assets. What portion of your portfolio could be converted to cash within 90 days? And that means, let's say if you have some stocks, you have some crypto and so on. How much of that portfolio of investments can you sell within the next 90 days without issues? Uh, and then you write the percent here of that. 
How many years of investment experience do you have in crypto stocks, bonds, and so on? That's the last one here. So that's all together. So if you were investing in stocks before crypto, then you also have put that in. So add it all up. So have you invested in digital assets before? Yes, you invested in DIG. You invested in Bitcoin to buy the DIG probably. Have you invested in cryptocurrency before? Yes, again, it's the exact same thing. Write the tickers you have invested in. For example, DIG, BTC, ETH, and so on. Have you invested in digital securities or assets before? Yes, you have. You write again the tickers you invested in. DIG, BTC, and so on. Are you comfortable with distributed ledger technology and able to invest in digital assets? Well, they want you to just write a few lines so they know that, that it shows that you do know what you're doing. That's what it's about. And then the date, your signature and your name in Roman letters. In form number three, you do the same again where you write in the ATTN field, the attention field to the dick. Go compliance team. And if you are an accredited investor, you will find under these one of them that fits. Or else, you will, if you're not an accredited investor, you will choose the bottom one and you put in the date, your signature, your name in Roman letters that is easy to read, your job title. If you are like retired or you don't work, then you put in Mr. Mrs. and that's okay. Form number four is only for accredited investor who said that they are accredited in one of these fields in form number three. So form number four is only for your accountant, lawyer, licensed financial advisor. He or she has to sign it. And by signing off on it, they will declare that you are somebody who is a credit investor and and make sure you you know that they they might ask you to provide additional stuff so so be accurate when you fill it out be accurate be honest and you know we are getting there you know step by step and then yeah we will look at the next parts after you've done this and once and for all, to close this down about being an accredited investor or not. And yes, usually, if you are not an accredited investor, you can only invest up to a certain amount. Uh, and that depends on your income and so on. But who is buying Dignity Gold? You are not. You are not paying Dignity Gold to get the tokens. Because you are even allowed to keep your DIG tokens after all this is over. Of course, don't move them now because they said don't move them but they also said on the Q&A section on the website that when all this is done you are free to do what you want with your DIG tokens and that's because they are not payment for getting the DIGG tokens DIGG is a new company DIG is a old company it's two separate things and you're not buying it they are giving it to you for free it is a private placement 